National school level tournaments attract prominent sumo scouts. Shikoreyama Oyakata was in Tsuchiura on Monday, as was the towering Naruto, and as was his coach, Sadagatake Oyakata, the man certain to recruit Taiki Tebakari when he graduates Saitama Sakai in 2022. Taiki's defeat in the team contest and utterly distraught reaction reminded us of how slim the margins are between sumo success and sumo failure. Taiki had won 5 out of 6 overall, Sakai 20 out of 25, and yet their wrestlers and fans were in a state of mourning. Such is the need for perfection in knockout competition, so painful indeed is the pursuit of it. The post-mortem of Taiki's defeat was conducted by Sarugatake, who insisted he was too defensive. Taiki is at his strongest when he attacks, he stressed. Unable to wait for the day when he can drum this message into Taiki directly. It wasn't the most attacking or convincing of starts in the singles either. Taiki once again prevented from securing the inside right, but this time he got away with the pull. Then the big surprise and a huge Tebakari confidence booster. Ochiai, emotionally exhausted after his team triumph, gets knocked off balance at the Tachiai by Shizuoka's Takei and is unable to defend resultant shots to the right pectoral. He's out, and swiftly followed by Fuma Kawazoi, who falls to Ishikawa Prefecture's Komura. I didn't get the match on video because I was engrossed in conversation with Sadagatake. How is it that regardless of the decade, 80s, 90s, 2000s, present, your stable always manages to produce masses of salaried level wrestlers? I asked. Ah, Sadagatake replied, that's because we won't be beaten for effort in the training area. We start our morning practice at 6am each day without fail. That was the regime put in place by my ex-coach. He meant former Yokozuna Kotozakura, who hails from the same Totori town as Ochiai. We had eight salaried wrestlers at our peak, Sadagatake continued. With Kotoshoho's promotion, we currently have five, so I've got to find three more, haven't I? Sadagatake kindly brought Kotoshoho along, giving him the opportunity to support his younger brother on the small condition that he carried coach's bags. Looks like you need an attendant, I said upon seeing Sadagatake dump a sack in Kotoshoho's arms. We haven't even got that far yet, Kotoshoho replied. We haven't got a supporters club or a ceremonial belt ready either. Events have overtaken us. After congratulating the 20-year-old on his promotion, I asked if he felt he had actually blown it with his 14th day defeat to Gagamaru, his first appearance in the judo schedule. Well, he said with a nervous smile, I knew a lot of guys above me already had losing scores, so I thought four wins in the bank would probably be fine. His mother, alongside us, scowled at the merest suggestion of complacency. But we know he's not complacent. The word is just not in the Tebakari lexicon. Younger brother Taiki showed how focused he was in round two against Ni, recovering his footing after a parry to again win with an attack from the left. Are your fighting styles similar? I asked Kotoshoho. Uh, to the extent that we both favor an inside right, yes. But whereas I tend to go in with the head, he tends to move around and dance, came the answer. That's all fine as long as Taiki's opponents fail to keep up with him. But when they do manage to get in tight, he lacks the solidity to withstand a well-directed push. Will the dancing be enough in his last 16 match against Kosaka? Let's join the watching Kotoshoho and find out.
And there's your answer. While few can doubt Taiki's natural talent, it's clear he requires more of his brother's bulk. I'd expect to see him at least 20 kilograms heavier by the time he joins Sarugatake. To prevent things from falling completely flat, let me now reintroduce local hero Hayato Kamei. He began his sumo career at the very place that produced Taiki, Kashiwa Juniors. But being two years older, he knows more tricks of the trade at this level. Keep funny stuff at the tachi eye to a minimum, go forward relentlessly with open palms or vice-like grips, and get the crowd on your side. That mentality more than did for Kawazoe's conqueror, Komura, in round three. Then in the quarterfinals, he was pitted with Taiki's vanquisher, Kosaka. The semi-finals presented a Cerner test against Shizuoka wave-maker Okua. How would Kamei cope with this far larger foe? With Tebakari-style legwork and an incredible parry at the rope. Note also his try-scoring dive to keep his body airborne for as long as possible. In the final... Kamei is tasked with defeating Ikeda from Kanazawa Gakuin High School, previously responsible for educating the likes of Endo, Daisho Maru, Yutakayama, and Enho. As it's a sweat-inducing occasion, the wrestlers are permitted to wipe themselves down once. And after that, it's down to battle, with 95% of the crowd at least behind one man. An unusual sideways step at the Tachi Ai allows Kamei to mount a side-on attack against which Ikeda has no counter. Kamei is the champion on his home turf. The gods must be on his side, Taiki's mother muses as the media queue up for the photographs in which her own son was expected to be posing. Instead, a great day's sumo ends with Taiki Tebakari having nothing to show for a 77% win record, Ochiai's team receiving their group medals, and Hayato Kame closing out his high school days with individual gold. As his high school is affiliated to Toyo University, he'll be heading there instead of a sumo stable next. And if he found time to watch day 15 of the professional tournament just gone, he'll know exactly what a Toyo University sumo education can bring you.